So good afternoon, I'm Under Sheriff Kevin McMahill and I'm gonna give you the details as we know them today um, regarding the in-custody death that took place this past Saturday night. The date and time of the call, the call occurred on May 14th, 2017 at 0054 hours. The initial call was a person stop generated by the officer. The location of the call, as you can see on the screen to my left, was at the Venetian Hotel, located at 3355 Las Vegas Boulevard South. Our involved officer in this incident is Kenneth Lopera, and that's spelled L-O-P-E-R-A. He's 31 years old. He's been with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department for the last five years. He's currently assigned to the Tourist Safety Division in the Convention Center Area Command. Officer Lopera was wearing a body-worn camera during this incident, and I will be showing you that video. Suspect in this case is Tashi, and I'll spell Tashi as T-A-S-H-I-I, -I, last name Farmer. He is 40 years old, black male adult, 6 foot, 195 pounds. Farmer's charges. At the present time, the force investigation team has concluded that there are no applicable charges that would have been levied against Mr. Farmer had he survived this incident. The officer said he believed that Farmer was attempting to carjack a vehicle. This conclusion was arrived at after the initial review of all the video surveillance to include the body-worn camera footage and consideration from all witness statements that were provided. On, my, on the screen to, you, to my left again is the criminal history for Farmer and as you can see couple of DUIs, um, 1996 in Hawaii, a robbery in 1999. There was an attempted murder charge in Hawaii in 2001. Uh, it was amended to a criminal property damage, but he had served a lengthy prison sentence and we're still investigating that. Parole violation in Hawaii in 2009, as well as an assault. And the most current arrest was a DUI in 2016 here in Nevada. The details of this incident are on Sunday, May 14th, 2017. At approximately 12.50 a.m., Farmer approached Officer Lopera and his partner at a coffee shop inside the Venetian Hotel. Farmer appeared to be sweating heavily, looked panicked, and told the officer that people were chasing him. Officer Lopera attempted to talk to Farmer to try to help him. Farmer immediately began trying to get away from Officer Lopera through a set of open doors into an employee-only area of the hotel. Officer Lopera immediately initiated a foot pursuit of Farmer down the corridor, but lost sight of him. Officer Lopera eventually caught up to Farmer outside of the hotel in a roadway on the property after being directed there by a security officer. Officer Lopera said on his body-worn camera that Farmer was attempting to open the tailgate of an occupied truck, but that he was unsuccessful in doing so. Farmer ran around to the driver's side of the truck and as Farmer approached the driver's side door, Officer Lopera believed Farmer was attempting to carjack the driver. He deployed his taser and told him, he, he told Farmer that he was going to tase him. Officer Lopera discharged his taser, successfully striking Farmer in the back and gaining what's called NMI or neuromuscular incapacitation for the standard five second cycle with the electronic control device. Farmer went to the ground and Officer Lopera gave him commands to roll onto his stomach. Officer Lopera applied the taser again. In totality, Officer Lopera applied his taser a total of seven times during this incident. On the body-worn camera, Officer Lopera can be heard calling for help, at which point the Venetian security converged and attempted to help Officer Lopera gain control of Farmer. During the struggle on the ground, Farmer can be seen attempting to pull the taser probe from his back. Officer Lopera holstered his taser and transitioned into delivering several strikes with his hands to Farmer's head and face area while Farmer is still lying on the ground. He continued to give him verbal commands to lay on his stomach. Farmer continued to struggle and Officer Lopera applied what he referred to in his body-worn camera as a quote, rear naked choke unquote, to Farmer. Officer Lopera applied the neck restraint for over one minute, then released it when additional officers arrived on scene to assist in handcuffing Farmer. Medical attention was requested by the arriving officers. 
Officers on scene rendered aid to farmer when it was realized he wasn't breathing. CPR chest compressions were administered by an LVMPD officer until paramedics arrive. Farmer was transported to Sunrise Trauma Center and was pronounced deceased at 1.39 a.m. I'm now going to play the body-worn camera for you of Officer LaPera. Um, there's a couple of different versions of camera here that I'm going to play for you, and it's very important for you to pay attention to this video, the, the body-worn camera video, as it does not clearly capture the strikes by Officer LaPera or the application of the neck restraint. I make this point to you because in the next that while the body-worn camera does not capture all of the actions, the next video I play for you will show all of the action. So this video that you're going to see here is the body-worn camera worn by Officer LaPera. This is initial contact. Somebody running? Give me red. Please. Don't move me. Go on your I'm stomach. Get out of your 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 stomach. Go down. Get out of your stomach. Stop. Do you get it again? Do you get it? Help me out.
He said to carjack somebody. So as you watch that video, you can't see any of the strikes the officer delivers, nor can you see him actually encircle with the neck restraint. And so the next video I play for you is captured from the surveillance video at the Venetian. I am going to play it for you from the point that the camera caught the incident. You will be able to clearly see the strikes by the officer as well as the movement into the neck restraint. You will also see several security personnel attempting to assist the officer prior to the arrival of the other LVMPD officers. So they'll zoom in here in just a moment. So the officer is in the green uniform. You see the strikes. Now he moves into the neck restraint. So as you can clearly see from both of those videos, the body-worn camera doesn't capture all of the details. That one captures some additional. Uh, what the fit detectors are trying to do right now as we speak is try to put the audio with the same actions that they see on that particular video. I know there's additional video out there that has been released to a variety of different news organizations, and we're still trying to get our hands on all of that video to adequately um, investigate this. The next video that I'm going to play for you is an overhead video. Um, captured by the Venetian that shows Farmer near the rear of the truck and subsequent movement towards the driver's side. It is important to note that our fit detectives have located the owner of this truck who provided them with a statement. The driver of the vehicle said he did not believe that the suspect was attempting to carjack him. This is very difficult to see. You'll see just sort of a dark shape as the white truck pulls up here. It's very brief video as well. So, Carlos? Here's the white truck and you'll see him emerge down here, right there. That's the officer approaching and that's when the initial tasing happened that I showed you moments ago. I did want to address a couple of issues. Um, there is media reporting that the LVMPD officers did not provide medical attention to Farmer for over 10 minutes and that's simply not true. Uh, on the screen, I put an overhead of the timeline of medical inf intervention uh, indicating farmer being set up and checked at 0058 hours. From 0101 to 0104 hours, officers conducted a pat down for we weapons, checked for pulse and breathing, and found farmer still had a faint pulse and breathing. At 0105 hours, an LVMPD officer began administering CPR when the pulse and breathing ceased. At 0106 hours, the Clark County Fire Department arrives, and at 0108 hours, 
Medic West arrives and assumes medical care. I'm also going to show you a couple of still shots depicting this activity from the Venetian videos. That's where the officer is doing CPR. I think there's one more. So they're rendering care to him almost immediately. A couple of other issues as it relates to the training and policy of LVMPD that I want to put on the record. In regards to the taser application, our policy says that the officer must evaluate the need to apply each individual administration of the five second taser cycle. Each application stands on its own and must meet the objectively reasonable standard as set out by Graham versus Connor. We'll go into a couple of these props that we have here in just a moment, but on, on the ground here is the Graham versus Connor standards, and on, on the board here is our use of force model. The policy further states that once the suspect has been exposed to three cycles of the taser or electronic control device, it shall be deemed ineffective unless exigent circumstances exist. Officers are taught to transition to another tool. Officers are also trained that if a suspect experiences difficulty breathing, they're to place the suspect on their side to reduce the risk of aspiration. In the case of empty hand strikes, empty hand strikes in this case fall into our immediate level of force, intermediate level of force. You see that on this chart here. In, the, in this level of force, however, I want you to know that officers must be able to articulate the suspect is attempting to cause harm to them or another person. If intermediate force is used, it is defined as having the potential to cause injury or substantial pain and is greater than the low-level force. It is important for you to know that this same level of force applies both to the electronic control device or taser and as an appropriate and an appropriate application of the lateral vascular neck restraint depending upon the level used. To the lateral vascular neck restraint, it is a technique to apply a specific application of pressure to the sides of a suspect's neck to overcome resistance and allow control. This technique does not restrict air supply to the subject and is applied to the sides of the neck, not the windpipe, to restrict blood flow. The LVNR is a control technique in which the carotid arteries on the sides of the neck are compressed, restricting blood flow to the brain, causing the subject to pass out. In our policy, there are three levels of the, of the lateral vascular neck restraint. Minimum, where the rear elbow is at a zero degree. Medium, where it moves up to 20 degrees, which changes both the pressure and the angle applied to the subject. And the maximum, where it moves to 45 degrees. Officers are trained to apply the amount of force necessary to bring the suspect under control. The pressure is to be relaxed when compliance is gained. Under ideal, con uh, under ideal conditions and proper technique, the suspect can usually be brought into compliance within four to seven seconds. As you move into level two or three of the LVNR, it is particularly effective against suspects who refuse to submit, are under the influence of drugs or alcohol, or the sus suspect possesses tremendous strength or resistance to pain. If a suspect is rendered unconscious by the LVNR, officers are trained to revive the suspect via palm strikes to the back. If the suspect does not regain consciousness within 30 seconds, officers are required to request medical attention to be expedited. I want to reiterate that the rear naked choke is not a technique taught by or approved by the LVMPD. The technique employed by the LVMPD and approved is the ladder of vascular neck restraint. I understand the concern in this community with this in-custody death, and I and we share that concern. The coroner has been provided all videos that were provided to FIT, the force investigation team, and related evidence and interviews to assist with their determination of cause and manner of death. We are awaiting toxicology results, and as you know, that normally takes six to eight weeks. I have provided a handout to again describe to uh, you that are not familiar with it, the investigative process that we follow for all officer involved shootings. This death is being handled in exactly the same manner. The case will be submitted to the district attorney's office for their review. I have an ask of you 
and the community as I stand in front of you today. I'm asking for your calm and your patience. In the past five years, the LVMPD has shown you all available evidence to include body-worn camera footage, photos, radio traffic, and all fatal and non-fatal shootings. We have shown that we truly believe that transparency and accountability are vital to retaining the trust of our community. This case is no different. The FIT detectives are working diligently along with the District Attorney's Office to review this case in its entirety. Each individual ECD application, strike, and neck restraint are being scrutinized to ensure all the facts are gathered and presented to the District Attorney. We will move through this case through the process as outlined in the handout and we will provide you additional information as well as to the community as appropriate when it comes available. 